cash in them there hills. Oh yeah, a treasure of cash for your gold, jewelry, and watches. Hello. If you grew up in Toronto, you'd be like, oh yeah, that guy. Iron cash man. I'll turn any gold into cash. Pawn shop kind of guy. He has those like really kitschy commercials. Uh, the cash man. I'm the cash man. I'm the cash man. All this booty on hand, and he's got, you know, he's flashing the cash. Lots and lots of cash. Cash and more cash. At the end, I think we'd say, oh, yeah. 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 Is he still alive? You know, when I know that somebody recognizes me, I get a, an endorphin rush. If I would have had another life, I would have, you know, been a movie star. I got the cash. The downside is that he's known for cash for gold and it's harder to get the public to now associate him with buying luxury goods as well. I know that there was some weird stuff. He got kind of implicated in something. Are you perhaps rethinking your cash man persona just on tackiness alone? No, I've never been scared to change. I've always changed, and not slowly. I can change on a dime. I don't want the street in the shot. We're all gonna die, but the business can live on forever. I'm Russell Oliver, and I am the cash man. Oh, yeah! Okay, so here we have an area that's established where all of the merchandise comes from all the locations. These cameras show all the locations at all times. Like you see a customer here in Oakville. But this is mine. I have my Bachelor of Arts graduated, but <clears throat> I never went to classes. I had a, I had a discotheque. <laughs> For those days, the late 60s, I was making like three or 4,000 for myself every week. I mean, that's like saying 30, 50,000 these days. And I blew it all. I blew it all. But I went from the nightclub into the jewelry business and uh, I couldn't afford to buy the jewelry business. The guys wanted 12,000. Uh, you'd think I'd have it, you know, just a few weeks of working, but no, 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 no. I blew it all on drugs and girls and gambling. Oh, we used to play throughout the night. We'd play poker and oh man, it was a beautiful time. I started in 1971, and I knew nothing about jewelry. In the beginning, I was doing the flyers on the street and benches. I did bench advertising. I was always very creative on advertising, but it wasn't enough. I had to make more money than that to support four kids. And then one day, I decided to go on television. Hello, I'm Russell Oliver of Oliver Jewelry, and I pay cash for your used jewelry. Made a $20,000 investment. That was a lot for those days. It turned out to be quite exciting and quite relevant. Come on down to Oliver's, have fun. Let's make a deal. There's no fool's gold at this here mine, only cold hard cash. I am the easiest, fastest loan arranger in town. Come and see me, Russell Oliver. Let's have fun. When I went on television, there was lineups. Right away, there were lineups. It was very busy. I got the cash and I'm coming out there. Do you guys want some cash? Justin, what year was WrestleMania? Do you remember? 98 or 99? They said, bring some cash, and you'll go up and down the aisles handing out cash. They came at us, and they oh, started yeah. grabbing all oh, the right, cash. Oh, right, 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 right. right. And were right. running through, and they were yeah. grabbing the cash. I had to hold it real tight. All right, we got to go around this way. It was such a thrill to get that kind of fame. I have four sons, Justin, Jordan, Jared, and Jonas. This is all four of them. Now, don't ask me who's who. They're all presently working in the business, and so is my wife, Barbara. No, she will not be on camera under any circumstances. It's impossible to get a picture of her. Even the family don't have pictures of her. She can be very embarrassed. Of course, she has uh, very good boundaries, healthy boundaries. I have very unhealthy boundaries. This is Janice. She does the um, refurbishing of bags. This is Fatima. She does the photography. And this is where Justin works. He does a lot of work at home, too, because unlike me, he loves his family. <laughs> Tongue in cheek. Now I'm at a stage in my life where I'm kind of retired. So, you know, just uh, keep uh, my finger in the company, but uh, kind of retired. Anyway, this is where I worked up until a couple of months ago. And then I went away and not only did it, Justin took over my job, but he eliminated my job in terms of automating everything and more upscale and more high end and more ethical. Oh, I'm so happy with it. I'm so happy that they've taken over, number one. And I'm so happy that the company has gone in a different direction. How long have you smoked for? I just started. 
just a couple of years ago. It's kind of embarrassing, but I don't get embarrassed though, you know? Like, yeah, I just don't get embarrassed. get embarrassed. But my boys are embarrassed and uh, Barbara's most embarrassed. You know, I was always somebody as a child brought up in South Africa that sought fame. I was always wanted to be famous before rich. Wherever I go in Canada, for sure, people know me, but especially Toronto. I actually like it. I actually like it. And I've never gotten tired of that. I've just always grown up with people coming up to my dad and saying, oh, hey, Cashman, how's it going? They grew up watching him and they're nostalgic for him. And it's just something they're like, wow, you're a real person. And it's, it's always interesting to see. This is um, the office where I did most of my uh, paperwork. This is a picture of uh, 1984. Two kids came in with guns and they robbed me. Okay, so we're at Cumberland Street. We were here from 1975 until 1991. I guess around 1984, 11 o'clock in the morning, two guys came in with guns. My staff scurried through the back up the stairs to go to the rooftop, but I stayed alone with these two guys. First guy shot the gun and the bullet went past my head into the wall. I didn't realize until later that it was so close it could have just gone over a little bit and I would have been dead. Then they pull out a crowbar and they smash the glass with a crowbar. That scared me way more than the gun with a bullet because the noise. And they started grabbing rings and putting them in the bag. And as they're grabbing, I'm pushing them away. And the other guy said, shoot him, shoot him. And I could see he wasn't gonna shoot me, so I chased after them. And as they got to the door, I grabbed one guy because they were on a motorcycle, they were about to hop on it. We started struggling for the bag. I went for the bag and the guy pulled out the gun. Now rather than struggle for the bag, we were struggling for the gun until finally it went off and shot a bullet right through my foot, which was, uh, you know, a little painful, it stung. I still tried to chase them, but I could and uh, they drove off. So I was close, very close. Then they operated and uh, it was beautiful because I got the nicest drugs you could ever imagine. Oh, was I high. Oh my God, I didn't feel anything, operation, nothing. It was just wonderful. The truth is I was very excited about uh, going to the hospital and getting drugs and getting on the front page again, the publicity. I was on the front page of the newspapers. I was the lead story on the news that night. I just craved that. I craved the excitement. I craved the, the highs. I'm Russell Oliver, and I pay cash to hundreds of customers a week. Oh yeah, over a thousand people each week come to me with their unwanted gold, jewelry, Rolex. This is this is your first. Oh yeah, this is the first time you ever said oh yeah in a commercial. Oh, is it? That's oh, what okay. this one is. Yeah, it came from Seinfeld. Kramer, he said that, and he said it like that. Oh yeah. I mostly buy your gold and diamond jewelry, but now I'll pay top dollar for your sterling silver jewelry. Oh, yeah. You see the evolution of the oh, yeah. I always believed in uh, a lot of body language. I'll bet you think that I'm Russell Oliver. But when you see me in my store, I'm Cashman. I'll turn any gold, even broken or scrap jewelry, into cash. That was the best. And was so well noticed that Warner Brothers in Hollywood noticed it. And uh, they sued us for $300,000. But it turned out to be the best publicity that we've gotten so far on, on all I don't think anything has been better publicity than that. It was all over the world. I'm the cash man. I'll give you money for your... We are used to spending a few thousand and a production team of two or three people at the most. I write them and we get the commercial out there very fast. Oh, yeah. And that one yeah. really was the most exciting and the Everybody most referenced one. Yeah. And people always refer to it as the dancing girls. Uh, last year, after the virus, Justin decided that we should go high end. Cash, 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 oh yeah. For your gold, diamonds, watches, handbags, oh yeah. That was $100,000 for very high end professional dancers. To me, they weren't as attractive as the original four, but I was younger then and now. Most things are not attractive to me, so. Hi, how are you? Welcome to Oliver Jewelry. <laughs> I'm Russell Oliver. I buy your jewelry. Princess Di, that was cool. That went on and then she died. And it was on a weekend that she died and I had to try and cancel it because of the bad PR. And they were all closed at the TV stations. I couldn't get hold of anybody. So the whole weekend it ran alongside with her funeral and stuff. 
You know what we should do tomorrow? You should say I'm the class man, and you should wear like an ascot or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like an ascot? Yeah. Like, uh, like something fancy, something classy, yeah. something like over the top classy. Yeah, you Maybe know, you can even good. have like a monocle or something. Yeah, well, that uh... <laughs> We'll dress you up like Mr. Peanut. Yeah. It's been quite challenging to transition the brand to more of a luxury brand because our original advertising was so crass and so in your face, it worked really well for what we were doing at the time, which was just cash for gold. But in terms of selling uh, Louis Vuitton and Hermes and Chanel and Cartier jewelry and expensive stuff, people don't associate those crass commercials with that. So how can we tell them we've transitioned from cash man to high-end brands? So I thought, how about class man? So we're gonna try it tomorrow in the commercial. He's gonna say, I'm, now, I'm in Yorkville, so I'm now the class man. Yeah. And you know, he'll dress up more than in his normal commercial and we'll have the beautiful Yorkville scenery and we'll see how it goes. Class man. I have become the class man. I have to stress it. The class, class man. man. Well, it's like cash man, class. but class man. Yeah, but it sounds class like man. cash or clash or something. So it's gotta be. Class man. Yeah, class. Class man. Class man. Class man. Class man. Something like that. And just name the brands. You know, it's gonna be an easy, simple commercial. No more blasting the cash man all over the place. And it's not necessary. Fine. Just good the way it is now. Just phasing out very nicely. Smooth. I was going to use this. Okay, come in, guys. Come in. So I want over the top fancy. From fancy. cash man to class man. How do you make it look man. very fancy? Well, I think fancy. And, you still, and yet you still want to match. more fancy. More like over the top. Tom would know. It's going to be busy with the jacket, but who cares, No, right? no, actually it'll look very, very nice. Oh, okay. But they don't sell ascots anymore, eh? No. Nobody I has them, really. I haven't seen ascots in the longest uh, yeah. time. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I prefer yeah, the Yeah, well, scarf. we'll take a picture, and uh, you prefer what scarf? This? Yeah, I preferred what you had. I prefer the scarf, too. Yeah, I don't I, think... Uh, I don't like that. Let's yeah. see, how, how would you do the scarf, though? I wouldn't do anything. You think that looks formal, eh? Because we want to make it as formal as possible. Yeah. This is the same idea. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. NASCAR would be better, but anyway. I want to spend five seconds showing the outside in the very beginning, but I don't want to waste 15 seconds or five seconds crossing the road. Okay. What for? So I definitely consider myself a showman. I mean, obviously, a lot of people do commercials, but they don't go way out like I do, and they don't put their whole body and soul into it, and they don't consider it a performance. Oh, you took out I Am Russell Oliver. You took out I Am Russell Oliver? This commercial will be done in a very calm, not a raised voice. A different image now, you know? We're going upscale now. Hopefully, be the exact opposite is my goal. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. Hello! Now that I'm in Yorkville, I am changed my name to I'm the... Fuck, I guess. Start again. Hello! Now that I'm in the heart of Yorkville, I am the cat, I am the... Jesus Christ. All right, start again. All of a sudden, there'll be 10 big trucks and this guy in their way. Jesus ah. Christ. It's probably close to my 100th shoot, but the problem is, as I get older and older, I can't memorize anymore. Louis Vuitton, Cartier, Tiffany, Rolex, and... Me Yo. I used to be able to memorize a 60 second spot. Then I got older and it was a 30 second spot. Then I got older and it was a 15, which I had no problem with. MS Birkins and Kellys. St look rich, stay rich, all that nonsense now. I can't. Now, today, I can't even memorize the 15. It's so hard and you wouldn't be crossing a fucking street. <laughs> I don't want the street in the shot. That's fine, that's it fine. It looks so good. Just though. where you are. It looks great. Yeah, yeah, crossing the street. Okay, back. just where you are. Look in the camera. I really wanted to slow down, show a relaxed cash man, class man, whatever, but uh, it's against my nature so much that I just couldn't help myself. I had to go fast to get those 40 words in 15 seconds. Don't just look rich, stay rich. 88 Yorkville, baby. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Right. Time? 1856. Ooh, too long. Too long. I'm satisfied with it. It was all very good. I'm glad that we did it today because uh, we're almost a year in this location, so finally we did a commercial.
Cashman is definitely a character. It's a persona. It's not me, really. It's my persona. Cecil Schwartz. Oh, Cecil, how are you? Oh, there's no no handshakes anymore, no, right? No, sorry. Oh, yeah. My wife, Linda. Oh, hi, Linda. But when I know that somebody recognizes me or uses my name or I'm famous, I get an endorphin rush. Something that I identify with and something that I really like. Yeah, you're from Toronto? Yeah. How are you? Uh, your commercials. Yeah, nice. that's right, Cashman. How you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. It's nice to have people, you know, admire you and say, oh, I'm thank you for what you do for the city and your commercials, we love them. I saw the new store, it looks great. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. Well, nice to see you. Yeah, likewise. I love the touch thank with you. the cigar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Take care. Classy. Yeah. And it's nice, they get a thrill out of it. You know, people enjoy that. I enjoy watching people enjoy that. Oh, have you been in Toronto all your yeah. life? You've probably I've... seen me since you were a kid. Oh, yeah. 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 Easy. Cash in hands and oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Do you guys think that Russell is a, a legend in Toronto? A legend. I think a legend is a stretch. I think he's a tack man. Tacky man. Cashman. Tacky. Tacky. You're, you're the cashman. I, no, I I'm say class the tacky man. man. Class. No, we changed that to class man. Class man. We opened it at 88 Yorkville Avenue. So I, now I know, I know, I know. Upscale merchandise, upscale me. I wear a jacket now and I've become classy. Where's Cigars. I'd like to say I don't care, and sometimes I'll behave in a manner that it looks like I don't care. But the truth is, of course I care. I do. If people say bad things, it kind of hurts, you know? Obviously, in retirement, this is where I will be spending most of my time. Here, when I swim, I usually go naked. I'm not going to do that for you. But I don't think they can see over there. Nobody can see it. But I go naked in the pool because it's a nice feeling of freedom, you know? The depression didn't come from anything reasonable. You know, people are depressed because of something, maybe sometimes, but also just depressed, just depressed, you know? Oh, nobody would believe it. Nobody would believe it. But they don't know what I know. Nobody can know what I know. Nobody can feel what I feel. But I was so busy and it was not a priority and I wasn't thinking about it. I may have had it all my life, but I recognized it a few months ago as being like 10 out of 10 depression. Like it was so bad and so painful. And I was always in a bad mood and bitchy and, you know, terrible, terrible, terrible. I could just say to myself, I'll go the rest of my life, which can't be very long. What could it be, five, ten years? I could just go miserable like that, and wallow in the shit that I'm in, you know, and just stay depressed, stay down, and not enjoy anything. Or I can go and change it. And at this stage, it might be hilarious to some people, but I don't care. I'm going to try it. Fortunately, because of my boys being in the business, I could do it. So my exercise in the pool consists of this, basically. It was like a clinic where people went down there for six weeks. We gave up our phones. We gave up our computers. We had no connection to the outside world. It taught us how to connect better with people, family, friends, and to have a better life. But for me, what I got most out of it was the fact that I now can relax. Between the work that I did and the um, medication that I received, just totally lifted. And it lifted to the extent where today I can walk around and if nobody recognizes me, you know, so they don't, so who cares? You know, it doesn't really matter, that doesn't matter anymore. But sometimes somebody will say, uh, who are you? And I say, uh, you don't know, Cash, man, you don't watch TV. No, I don't watch TV, you know, people say, I read a lot, I don't watch TV. TV's for dumb people, so I don't know who you are. What, what are you, you know what I mean? If you've been in Ontario for a year or two, but five or 10 or 20 years, you don't know who I am, you're full of shit. Hello, now that I'm in Yorkville, I am the class man. Louis Vuitton, Cartier, Tiffany, Rolex, you name it, we've got it. Look rich, stay rich, 88 Yorkville, baby, oh yeah.